and it's Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're talking, well, someone asked me uh, can I do a video on cryo hardening, cryogenic hardening and so on and I said yes, but before we get to that, which will be a video, two or three videos from now, we have to basically talk about cars doing made in, we have to talk about steels, we have to talk about steels and hardening, how it is possible, what happens and so on. So, um, steel is a alloy and steel is generally an alloy between um, iron, which is Fe, and carbon, which is C. And it is, uh, the different types of steels that you get, um, are you basically have to different properties. So sometimes you want uh, toughness, sometimes you want uh, uh, you know, strength, sometimes you want hardness, sometimes you want um, good fatigue properties or anti-fatigue properties, sometimes you want good tensile strength, sometimes you want good compressive strength, sometimes you want it to be malleable to a degree, and blah, and blah, and blah. So, uh, the first thing we have to do is we've got these two elements, we've got iron and we've got carbon, and um, the first thing we need to do really is just uh, talk about um, uh, steel as uh, steel as it comes. So usually you have um, mild steel, and you might have all heard of mild steel, um, and you probably all are, you know high carbon steel and low carbon steel. So basically, that's what this series is going to be about. It's going to be about the different types of steels. What you have to do. And you might have heard uh, words like um, ferretic and martensitic and austenetic and stuff like that, uh, austenites, um, you know, and all the other ones. There's pearl, pearlite, and God, there's you know, there's loads of different ones. Um, and it does get oh my God jargon all of a sudden. So I'm going to go basically go through the step by steps of. Um, the basics of how it all works out because you start getting what you call the iron carbon uh, phase diagram which kind of fucks people up as well uh, if you're just interested if you're just interested look into it you go whoa, whoa, whoa I'm about to do a u-turn because that seems all madness so the first thing we need to talk about is uh, crystalline structures now I'm not going to you know don't switch off I'm not going mental yet but basically what happens is is when a um, metal when an alloy uh, we'll just say alloy when an alloy is a liquid, you've just got free atoms just floating around doing what they do, loosely bound, and so on. And then what happens is, is it starts to cool. So let's just say we have um, an area like this that we can focus on. And this, you know, it's like a little window. And we can see all this molten uh, metal stirring around. And then it starts to freeze. It starts to basically solidify. And the proper term for that is freezing. And uh, what happens is, is you get what you call nucleation sites. Now, a nucleation site is, imagine this is all liquid. It has to start somewhere. And usually it's around an inclusion. So usually it's around something that really isn't meant to be there. That's something that isn't um, as compatible as all the other atoms that are in there. Uh, it's the same with nucleation sites. For bubbles in champagne glasses where you have to have a bit of grit or a bit of dirt it's the same as freezing in water water will at its nucleation site for freezing um, will start from a, a contaminant in the water if you have 100% pure 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 H2O its freezing point is actually minus 40 and um, it's it's because there is no nucleation site and it but basically you have to really drop it below its why what we call an, its natural freezing temperature to physically force it to start locking together and so on. Anyway, we'll go into bits about that later on. Um, not in this, but in other videos. Um, so basically what happens when you look at this, uh, you know, you've got this little window, uh, a nucleation site has to start. And as it starts to cool and cool, there's loads of nucleation sites. So we'll just say there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. And we'll just put one here just to make it a bit less um, uh, even distributed and we'll put one there fuck it and what happens is is it all starts to freeze and it starts to grow a crystal so over time it spreads out like this 
and some are quicker than others you know some are like this and some are bigger like this and these are just basically just freezing points so all this around it is still molten and we'll just start freezing like this like that and then what happens is is eventually as these crystals start to grow they will literally bump into each other so like here they bump into each other and this will bump into there and this one will bump into this one will bump into that one that one that one like so and this one will bump into this one like this and this one's squeezing there like that and this one will bump into there like that and so on and you can see what's happening and basically what you end up with is you end up with these sections here and these are called boundary layers these are called grain boundary layers because we call each one of these um, individual nucleation sites we call them a grain so the reason why all this is important is because um, in metallurgy the size of the grain size can change the way that the material behaves generally it's toughness and stuff like that it's resistance um, to compression sometimes it's resistance um, to tension stuff like this, tensile strength stuff like that but basically um, when a material cracks nine times out of ten it will break down it, the crack will appear down these grain boundary layers so you might have heard um, that in turbine blades where there are extreme temperatures um, the blades themselves are under extreme tension and tension is stretching when you you know you tense something when you tense up it's pulling something um, you know so tensile strength is how does it resist being pulled uh, you're putting something under tension um, the blades the turbine blades on a jet engine have been wung around so fast that the um, centrifugal forces of it trying to force outwards of it trying to fly outwards basically so you'll have your main uh, hub housing there you'll have this blade and it's trying to be it was actually trying to fly this way um, but that basically pulls uh, at the hub and then for the, the forces that you know this blade this blade has quite a lot of mass they're quite heavy uh, you know they, they don't weigh nothing um, it's quite a lot of force and it's extremely hot and they've been blasted at you know so they're under a lot of force it's hot it's just a horrible place to live and one of the new technologies where they can push these blades even further is what they call single crystal growth now you might have seen these before and i'll put up a picture now but basically what they do is they cast the blades and then they have these little helical bloody what is it's in where they feed it from the bottom and all they do is they um, have the pour molten metal in them and then they control the uh, crystal growth so they'll basically start off a nucleation site and it will grow and 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 through the gate it'll grow grow and it keeps on growing all the way through the blade so there is no boundary layer there isn't another one coming in and then them two striking and making a ground uh, a boundary layer a grain boundary so these blades are seriously seriously shit hot you know what i mean um the only problem with it the only problem with it is it's very very expensive just like anything else when you really go to the extremes of um you know of the science of that subject but that's basically where ground boundary layer comes in and um the other problem as well is that when um atoms or um the atoms in molecules like to they have a, a structure a crystalline structure which we'll go into in the next video the difference between some of them not all of them but basically you have an atom 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 and it, you know it makes a grid uh, these grids can be all you know different ones um, you know diamond is triangular based but we'll go into that ish and a bit in another video after this um, but yeah you can see that the structure but the thing is is if you have a nucleation site over here and you have a nuclear site, nucleation site over here none of these atoms know which way is up so these ones start doing this like this you know so they make a grid like this 
and then there's another ones and they make a grid like this and you've got to remember that when these atoms touch that's the problem they don't fit together properly when they actually you know touch each other you've got these ones that are like these these ones that are like this and none of them uh, dickhead, like that some of them align some of them don't but generally they even slightly out you know tiny amounts of degrees out uh, some of them can dislocate and join together but a lot of the time they don't and that's in a sense another weakness of um, casting that's why sometimes casting or not sometimes that's why casting is generally weaker uh, than just say forging forging you can in a sense smash some of these um, atoms so they start their crystalline structure starts to literally line up and stuff like that you can never ever get it perfect it's just like inclusions it's just like um, trying to make sure nothing oxidizes when you're fucking around in an atmosphere and so on but that's uh, part one to this video so we'll put part one um, in the next video I want to start talking about um, ferritic steels uh, carbon content and then we'll actually talk about hardening of uh, not just the temperatures but what happens between um, face centre cubic body centre cubic and um, how tempering works and not just the hardening um, um, embrittlement stuff like that and other fatigue properties um, how some of these how some of these things can be uh, controlled by adding other elements um, you know stuff like that so I hope that makes sense just for a, a get go and you know you kind of now have looked at some kind of very very basic crystalline structure in two dimensions and ground boundary layer, ground, uh, grain boundary layer. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.